How do you find peace of mind? Choose from our full lineup of Subaru certified pre-owned vehicles at MilwaukeeSubaruCity.com. Certified pre-owned Subarus come with a seven-year powertrain warranty, roadside assistance, Carfax vehicle history, and so much more. Plus, test drive and take delivery from the comfort of your home. Getting a certified pre-owned Subaru. Now that's peace of mind. Go to MilwaukeeSubaruCity.com to learn more. Extended powertrain coverage from original warranty start date. No deductible applies to standard security plans only. See your Subaru retailer for complete details. Live from multiple locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailing, co-host Ed Kaluka, featuring dangerous Dan Margetta, and Brian Schmidt. LTN is a caller-driven program, and your participation is encouraged by calling 414-421-7901. That's 414-421-7901. Now, the creator and host of the Fastest Hour in Radio, Todd Bailing. Welcome to the program. Happy Easter, everyone. It used to be a sacred day in NASCAR. Not so much anymore. We run on the dirt at night at Bristol. Todd Bailing in Phoenix, Arizona, joined by my three friends, beginning with the longest tenured Ed Kaluka of West Bend, Wisconsin. Morning, Eddie. Good morning. morning. Welcome to the dirt. I hope we don't have as many yellows as we had yesterday. Yeah, yeah. uh, I don't think we will, but Dan Margetta, who is uh, on the road today, right, Dan? Yeah, we're actually up here in Minocqua. We took our family trip up here for Easter. Uh, vacation. Actually, we're at the Lake of the Torches Casino. My parents get free rooms up there, so I drove them up on Good Friday. Uh, we're heading back. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy birthday to my dad. It's my dad's 76th birthday today. We're come up here, and I'm going to have to head home for Easter dinner and uh, my dad's birthday and everything. Family stuff back home. All right. Beautiful. Honey, you'll be on the road for the show today, then. And, of course, Brian Schmidt of Ootsburg, Wisconsin, who assures us there's no snow on the ground there. No. No, there isn't. Happy Easter to everybody. It's going to be in the 70s here this week. This is uh, incredible. Let's not look past the end of the weekend, but uh, racing season is going to get underway here in the state of Wisconsin. The grass is green. I might even have to mow my lawn later this week. So uh, oh, things be- are looking up. Uh, the Dells is where it all gets started on Tuesday, on Sunday. But th- you guys told me that th- we might actually get going on Tuesday night. Yeah, Beaver Dam looking to open up on Tuesday. And if if they're dry enough, and the, I mean, the weather certainly looks good enough. So we'll see if that happens. That would be That would be interesting to see a dirt race roll off first. Yeah, imagine that. Um, glad you can join us. Uh, Kyle Larson will start from the poll today. I uh, I have a, a, a friendly neighborhood casino here where it's fun to stop in and have a reason to come in and, you know, look over the odds and pick out a couple of guys. And here I think, eh, I think I'll look at Reddick and Larson and Bell and see what the odds are for those three. And, you know, as you might imagine, there's no bargains in that department. So uh, before... The qualifying races yesterday, I was able to uh, pick out and put a couple of bucks on Austin Dillon. I got 50 to 1. Now, you say to yourself, Austin Dillon, isn't that like, uh, you know, throwing your money away? Well, it, it, it might be. He is in the same equipment as Kyle Busch. Keep that in mind. And he is. He did win a heat and will be starting second. You know, that's that's not too bad. I also thought it might be a good idea. Uh, to put a couple of bucks on the 14 car, too, because, as you'll remember, last year, Briscoe nearly won the thing uh, after a bonsai move didn't work out his way. Uh, I got him a 10 to 1. Unfortunately, I find out after I get uh, get home that he's got a broken finger. Brian, is that is that going to matter? I don't think so. I saw an interview with him after the truck race, ye- or, yeah, after the truck race yesterday, and he said it didn't seem to bother him too much. Uh, did a little bit in the first heat race for the truck race, and then in the in the cup heat race, he said he was fine. So I think I think he'll be all right. That happened on Thursday night, driving his dirt late model. Ironically enough, yeah. it is a 250 lap race on this half mile, so uh, it's going to be uh, a, a definite challenge for a guy with a broken finger. The la- the uh, uh, brakes will be at lap 75 and lap 150. Um, the uh, green flag is at 414. It's a late start today. It will be televised on Fox, and you will get complete coverage 
right here on the Big 920 beginning at 5 o'clock this afternoon. So uh, be sure to tune in, and uh, we race on the dirt on Easter night. Interesting. You didn't happen to see J.J. Yaley's odds, did you? He's driving Rick Ware's car, and he's starting third today. Yeah, I saw that, and, um, you know, when I when I go through the odds and I see J.J. Yaley, it's usually real high odds, and I don't pay any attention to it. And, and that was before, again, before this uh, this uh, qualifying race yesterday. There's a couple of guys. Uh, Matt Crafton is going to be there. Uh, he is driving for Cody Ware. So this is all backmarker news, uh, who's taking off for personal reasons. Matt Crafton is a dirt guy. He races a uh, A modified all over the place. Matter of fact, he was just out here not, not too long ago and, uh, and raced. But uh, Crafton is a dirt racer. Also, uh, the greatest uh, dirt late model guy alive probably at this point, Jonathan Davenport, is getting his big chance. He's going to drive the number 13 car. Rolls off 21st. Crafton will be 24th. And I don't really understand the reason why Josh Berry, who's done just a spectacular job in the nine car so far, why they they replaced him for a road course. Why would they let him race in a, a dirt race? He has no dirt experience. Rolls off 31st. It's like they just, well, we don't need the points that bad. We'll just... I don't, I don't really get it. Brian, there's no shortage of really good dirt guys that would have been available. Yeah, there, there are people all over the place, and there's people that have a little bit of NASCAR experience. You have to go back a ways. I mean, it comes to my mind, Tim McCready is one. He's racing in the dirt right now, and he, he ran for Childress back in the, the early 2000s. Um, Josh Richards, he dabbled with the Xfinity Series and the ARCA Series back in, like, 2011, 2012-ish time, and he's not even racing on the dirt right now, but he'd be another one. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what their thought process was in that. Maybe they just weren't aware of it. Maybe they did reach out to these guys and they weren't interested. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of a head-scratcher to see Barry in that car this today. Anybody who would like to participate in this program can call us at 414-421-7901, and we'd, uh, we'd be happy to take your calls. Uh, J.J. Yaley, like Brian just said, will start third. Christopher Bell, fourth. Kyle Bush will be fourth. Fifth, uh, Tyler Reddick, sixth. Uh, a little bit of a surprise for me. Cindric uh, rolling off seventh. He also had pretty good odds that I didn't really consider when I went there yesterday. But uh, Ryan Priest has he? He doesn't really do dirt, does he, Brian? I didn't think. No, he- he's got really no dirt background. That was the interview after his heat race yesterday. He kind of said he was he surprised himself. You know, he's a modified guy, an, an asphalt modified guy. So for him to run that well, he just says the car had great balance. And it just was fast. I mean, he was in that race. He was battling. I believe Davenport was in that race, too. So he he just he said the car was incredibly balanced. Well, that helps. Um, Ryan Blaney, whose dad was a dirt racer anyway, uh, will be ninth. And William Byron, 10th, who seems to be good no matter where he goes, no matter what he's driving. So um, this is a... Um, uh, a weekend of uh, ex- ex- experimentation, and Brian, I don't know if they're going to leave this go forever. Nobody is saying anything good about racing on the dirt at Bristol, including the most prolific dirt track racer, uh, I think, of the bunch, and Kyle Larson. Starting from the pole, he didn't even have anything good to say about it. No, and that's kind of the cool thing about Kyle Larson is he, he'll tell you exactly what he thinks, and I don't think he oftentimes thinks about what he's saying before he says it. But, you know, somebody asked him about his car. I mean, yeah, even after he won his heat race, he was kind of ho-hum about it because his car didn't handle real well. And, and then they asked him what they thought about racing here at Bristol because nothing has come out yet saying whether they're going to do this again next year or not. And he goes, no, I don't think we should. I, I think the race at the concrete, you know, is the best. We had good races last fall on the concrete. These cars do well. And they said, well, what dirt track should we go to then? And he looked at him and real frankly just goes, well, none. These aren't dirt cars. They don't belong on the dirt. Um, you know, we, he says, I don't, I don't think we should be racing these cars on the dirt. Interesting to hear that from him. Yeah, no kidding. Windshields, that's the, the, the thing, I guess. That's a, that's, it, it became an issue in the trucks yesterday. Yeah, just Jonathan Davenport, he talked about after his race, he had, he had one of those Swiffers in there, and the head of the Swiffer fell off, and during a caution, he had such glare, he couldn't even see in front of him, so he took his glove off, stuck it on the end of his stick, and tried to wipe his windshield so he could at least see from the inside, because what happens was it creates a vacuum, and the dust goes inside the car and sticks to the windows. That's why regular dirt cars don't ever have 
windshields in them. And I thought NASCAR was going to go through and fix this issue a couple of years ago when we had the mud, and they, they continue to insist on having the windshields in those cars. So <laughs> It was pretty interesting. They're getting ready. During a break, uh, they, Davenport says, show me the tire wear, and they put the tire on the hood of the truck to show them how it was wearing. That was just fantastic. Uh, it's something different, that's for sure, and they're going to be racing today at 414 Green Flag. We'll be back right up to the east. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need. With fresh mulch arriving daily, from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com, your national park of speed. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the -the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3500. Or visit our website at WagnerAutomotive.com. And now, the the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. The best player in basketball is Giannis. It doesn't mean he wins the MVP, but he already got his. And now it feels like it's Embiid's turn. And it feels like that. Giannis has graduated to the point he's like Patrick Mahomes. Well, you expect him to be great. LeBron got to that level. The Dan Patrick Show. Dan and the Danettes and you. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. All right, I'm a dork. I told you 414 green flag. That's Arizona time. 614 is when the race starts tonight. And, of course, like I mentioned, coverage right here on the Big 920 begins at 5 o'clock. The green is at 614. Just straighten that out. This week, uh, we we got some bad news here at LTN, and uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out exactly what it all means and how we're going to deal with it. And uh, none of us, as much as uh, Dan Margetta, who who uh, put on Facebook, on his Facebook page this week, that uh, he's got to deal with cancer. Dan, you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure. I mean, and, and yeah, it's not good news, but it could be a heck of a lot worse. I mean, I look at it that way. Uh, the kind I have is, is diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. It's the most common kind of non-Hodgkin's. It's very treatable. It's got a very good uh, cure rate of over 80%, especially when it hasn't spread, and mine hasn't. It's on my collarbone, and that's where it's, it's sitting. I've gone through all the tests. It hasn't gone anywhere else, and it's stage one, which is uh, all those tests so far have done pretty good. I just got to go through six rounds of chemo now to get it done. Hopefully be done with it by the end of July. It'll start Tuesday. Um, and uh, what have they told you? Is it going to be, you know, are you going to be knocked out for a little while, or are you going to? I think you'll be tired for a couple of days. It's called our chop is what it's called. If you look it up and everything I've looked at, it is very successful. Um, it's four different medicines that, uh, that kill it and one that, that'll prevent it from coming back. And it's done like through an IV. You go for one day and you wait 21 days. 
Um, fatigue is a, a, a big thing, I think. You know, I'm hoping not to get too sick. I hope that we to keep doing stuff. I'll probably lose my hair, but it's falling out anyways. That doesn't really bother me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I just want to get it done, you know, and especially – what it could have been from what it is, I, I'm, I'm pretty relieved that way. So um, as long as I can go and get, uh, you know, get this taken care of and be done with it and still have uh, half a summer to deal with it, uh, that could be good. You know, Dan, as a uh, husband of a cancer survivor, I can tell you that, uh, um, you know, they, their treatment, as tough as it is, works pretty damn good. And uh, uh, you know, picked a good time in life, I think, to get this out of your way and, and move on. And uh, well, we're all obviously uh, pulling for you. And uh, if if you need to take time off from this or anything else, you realize you got to take care of Dan Margetta first. Yeah, I know that, and that's I'm hoping that uh, you know I'm hoping that that uh, it won't be as bad. I mean, it's it's not going to be good, but I'm hoping to do things. I, I don't I'm not a kind of guy to just sit around, and so I'm I'm kind of hoping to get through this and uh, still be able to do things. I still plan on going to Slinger. I still plan on, on doing as much as I can there. I talked to them about it, and they said, yeah, you, it's not going to wipe you out completely. I mean, you just got to see how it goes this first round, and if it responds well, I think it should get better as it goes on, and uh, I think we'll be okay. You you had planned to go to the Dells Sunday for their opener, and uh, that might be up in flux right now. So you just you do what's good for Dan Margetta, and don't worry about uh, radio or racing for a while, and, and start to... Take care of yourself, all right? Thank, thank yeah, goodness, Dan, thing. we're at the streaming area of uh, streaming era of racing, right? That way you can still enjoy Absolutely. it, even if you got to sit back. Five years ago, right. that wasn't even on the radar. Right. No, right. And that, that, that's why, I, you know, if I, if I can't be there, I'll still be able to watch it. Uh, the Dells is kind of up in the air just because the first week, you know, your, how your immune system is, and you're kind of acceptable to infections and stuff. And he said the first week to kind of avoid crowds until you know how you respond to this thing. Uh, Madison might be up on here, too, because the second round, first round is April 11th, second round is May 4th, so it'd be a couple uh-huh. days after that. Um, IndyCar weekend and NASCAR weekend at Road America, we'll see. I'd, I'd like to be there, but that's about three or four days after the, the treatment round, so if I've, if I've done okay, I'll, I'll be there if I can. Um, you know, I, I, how can I survive without going to racetrack, man? That's what I do. There is a race fan for you. Looking at the schedule for racing as he looks at the schedule for chemotherapy. Uh, that's amazing. Well, Dan, um, uh, your best from all of us, obviously, and we'll be in your corner and, uh, we'll keep us informed as how things are going. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, the uh, telephone number, as I mentioned, 414-421-7901. Biff, the cheese farmer <laughs> from Racine, our first caller. Biff, how are you doing? Yeah, real good morning. Thank you for taking my call, and uh, happy Easter to everybody. I was, we're all excited about the race season starting with next week with the icebreaker, but me and my cousin, we've been going to the Milwaukee Mile for like 40 years at least, and last year for both races, we don't remember noticing the big scoring tower. Is that gone, or, I mean, NASCAR's coming. We'll, I mean, did we miss that? I mean, we had a couple of beers, but, I mean, will that be coming back if it's gone? Or Right, do you know? I, I think I do remember they did get rid of it. It wasn't up there last year. I'm thinking when the truck series comes, NASCAR will bring a couple of their screens along, so you'll have those, um, which they have generally at all their events. And, and that's kind of the trend that you see now is a lot of places are going t- because there's so many screens. I mean, even if you go to a World of Outlaw race these days, they usually have two, sometimes three. Like we were at Volusia, they had three big portable screens up at all their events. So I don't think Milwaukee's going to put one back up just for that, but I, you will see a screen. I believe, Dan, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Midwest Tour even has a screen up every now and then, don't they? And I, I think you could see that. Like at Kokona, I think they had one up. Yeah, they have a screen. Like... And sometimes places have, like, portable scoreboards they bring up, too. The, the main scoreboard is gone. It's been gone for a while there. You know, depending on what the future for that place is, maybe they'll bring it back. I mean, I see Indy cars talking about maybe coming back there now. So, I mean, we'll see how this truck race goes. And, and uh, that that's pretty successful, and they get uh, more – high you know event races there you may see some more improvements that way but for now it's going to probably be a portable scoreboard or a screen well biff the answer to your question we're, is you we're just wondering were why you got rid of it though huh? what's that yeah well, we're just kind of curious why would you get rid of something i mean uh, I well good luck well, future the place for dan. We'll, be, we'll be praying for dan thank you very much
All right, thanks for the call, Biff. We do appreciate it. And if anybody else wants to uh, be, be a part of the program, 414-421-7901. Um, we're going to sneak away for a break, come back with uh, some pretty crappy news this week. Wait, it's, it's full of crappy news. This one has to do with the uh, review panel who takes a look at, uh, at the penalties. What the hell are these people thinking? We'll be right back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low-mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrood outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need with Miller's Sales and Service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Sunday at Gals Raceway Park. The Alive for Five Super Late Model Series returns for the ninth annual Icebreaker 100. See the Midwest Best Super Late Model Drivers go door-to-door in our founding racing action. Plus the Midwest Truck Series and UMA 602 Outlaw Late Models. Gates open at 11, qualifying at 12.30, racing at 2. Skip the lines and save on advanced tickets at DellsRaceWayPark.com. Dells Raceway Park, located two miles west of I-9094 and exit 85, just off Highway 12. Dells Raceway Park, Wisconsin's best racing entertainment. The Milwaukee Admirals play their final regular season road game on Wednesday night when they travel to Iowa to take on the Wild. Carry it back the other way. They have numbers. Santos left circle. He shoots and scores. Matthew Santos. Pre game coverage begins at 6 30. Face off is at 7 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Welcome back to LTN. Happy Easter, everybody, as we get ready to race on Easter Sunday at the dirt at Bristol. Um, this week, <clears throat> a, a genuine challenge to the legitimacy of NASCAR. I'm sorry. Um, the same penalty, 100 point penalty that was taken away from Hendrick on each of his four teams, a total of 400 points was, was awarded back to Hendrick. They had a different review panel and colleague racing who had the exact same issue and had the exact same 100 point penalty went in front of a different review board. And all they did was reduce the penalty by 25 points, uh, compared to Hendrick's 100. That was just did away with, um, how legitimate is NASCAR? Is it, is it becoming a joke? Really, folks? I mean, this is upsetting to everybody in the sport. If you don't believe it, uh, just check out some of the chatter on uh, social media. Uh, why do we, like I like to say, penalties don't matter as long as they're universally and consistently enforced. Everybody should have the same penalty for the same damn infraction, and it's not happening in NASCAR, and it's turned them into a joke. Am I wrong? Well, they addressed that this week um, with the president of NASCAR and said they realized they had a problem with that, and they straightened it out in the future, such as putting the penalty parts back on display like they used to do and get better with these review boards to... uh, straighten that problem out, but they did realize they had a problem. And they changed their rule book around too. You know, now obviously you have an appeals panel and it depends on what kind of panelist you get. And I think they're going to have to look long and hard at who they have to be their panelists. But now if they should find that the penalty 
or if the rule was broken, you can't just give all their points back like they did. They have to, you have to, you can reduce it like what happened with the 31 car, but you can't just take them all away like what happened with the 400 car. Frustrated, and then they change another rule because it's NASCAR stands for we change uh, rules every year, and we hope you can keep up with it. And too bad if you can't. Um, and they change another rule that says now review boards can't do this and can't do that. I just. I just wonder how legitimate um, their their whole process is. It, it, it's it's a challenge to everybody, owners, fans, drivers, everybody. Although, yeah, I think they got to get well, back to the black and white part about it too. Where this is a penalty, you know, this is what you do. This is your penalty. This is your result. You know, and get back to that where you this appeals process thing is. You know, and, and I understood Hendrick's deal. We talked about it last week where they said, you know, this part may not, may not be suffice coming from the manufacturer, this and that. Either that or these parts got to go to NASCAR before they get distributed to the teams. You know, if that's where your problem is lying here, a lot of these things are these parts that are engineered and stuff like that. And NASCAR looks at these parts first and says, yeah, this is a good part, and then sends it to the team. Maybe that would cure some of this too. I, I don't know. I, but it is not a consistent process right now. They did um, uphold the 25-point penalty to Denny Hamlin for his stupidity. Um, it was not for taking out a car at Phoenix. It was for getting on uh, a podcast and telling everyone that he took out another car on purpose. So the stupidity penalty was uh, upheld, 25 points. And then, of course, he has his mouth open again. Uh, boy, he is a, he is a very um, opinionated guy. Pretty good driver. Not very good at pit stops, let's face it. Uh, he'll probably never be champion just because he can't get his own head out of the dark area there. Uh, but uh, uh, Hamlin certainly is opinionated and uh, makes for a good podcast, I guess. Um, but what I thought was really a, a, something that, boy, oh, boy, NASCAR is on top of it now. Ed, they came back to the old way of doing things. things they're now going to display illegal parts for everybody to walk up and look at. Yeah, that's what I just said a minute ago. Yeah, and uh, how? Well, remember, with, with Hamlin's deal now, back at last year at Texas, didn't William Byron take him out? Admit he took him out, got the penalty, and got his points back. So it's kind of the same situation. Yeah, I. It's just, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna we're in a in a gray area a lot of times, and NASCAR hates gray areas. They want everything to be cut and dried, and uh, if if parts are not coming to the teams. Uh, the way the teams want to race them, it's really not up to the team to modify the part without going to NASCAR first and telling them, we have a problem, we need to change this, and uh, NASCAR has to approve it in advance. And, you know, some teams apparently can get away with that. Unbelievable. Are you ready for summer? Cousin Subs and Summerfest are teaming up once again for the return of the world's largest music festival with a special ticket offer. Simply place an order online at CousinSubs.com of $30 or more now through April 30th and receive a free weekday Summerfest ticket. This offer is not valid in store. One qualifying purchase per day per email will result in a free weekday ticket. Cousin Subs, we believe in better. For a complete list of rules, visit CousinSubs.com slash Summerfest. We made USAA insurance for veterans like James. When he found out how much USAA was helping members save, he said, It's time to switch. We'll help you find the right coverage at the right price. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. Restrictions apply. Ed, don't you think this is a thing where, you know, NASCAR needs to go to these manufacturers and, and maybe have these manufacturers tighten up their house a little bit and get their parts a little bit more on task? Because that seems to be where the biggest problem is. And there's like a time factor here where... If you're getting this part from the manufacturer, you don't have time to mess around with going to NASCAR, showing them this. Showing them, I mean, these teams, there's, we're still in a, in a situation where parts are scarce, so they need to get this stuff on the car right away. So instead of monkeying around for three days showing it to NASCAR, they're going to just modify it and put it on the car. I mean, that kind of seems to be what's been going on here. Well, that's the problem with this whole thing started with this new car. Is they put it off for a competitive bid situation, and then they picked out the suppliers they wanted to do business with rather than the quality of the suppliers that would they had. Um, and that that's a problem. I know there's other suppliers out there that wouldn't have these problems, but 
the way they selected who was going to do what. We we talked at length about that at the PRI show amongst many of the, the you know manufacturers that the way NASCAR picked who was going to do what. We were kind of surprised that some of these people who awarded contracts that really didn't have the quality problem didn't have the quality that other prob- other people had. Good parts, bad parts, doesn't matter if every part is used by every team because that way there is no advantage and one team did not try to modify a single source piece, and that is what the issue is. By the way, uh, not just, uh, you know, Hendrick, there's a line there, you know. We want to make sure we're on the cutting edge of getting everything right. This week, there was another penalty for Hendrick Motorsports, the 24 and 48 cars had, quote-unquote, modified greenhouses. They were each uh, fined 60 points, five playoff points, and $75,000 each. And the interim crew chiefs were suspended for two weeks. So we're going to get the third stringers in there now in the 24 and 48 cars. Uh, well, we'll we'll get you one way or another. You 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 overturn this? Well, we'll 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 have to keep looking real nice and hard for you. And the greenhouse is everything from the door door sill up. Up. We'll be right back. Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Raceway Park. The Alive for Five Super Late Model Series returns for the ninth annual Icebreaker 100. See the Midwest Best Super Late Model Drivers go door to door in our founding racing action. Plus the Midwest Truck Series and UMA 602 Outlaw Late Models. Gates open at 11, qualifying at 12:30, racing at 2. Skip the lines and save on advance tickets at DellsRaceWayPark.com. Dells Raceway Park, located two miles west of I-9094 and exit 85, just off Highway 12. Dells Raceway Park, Wisconsin's best racing entertainment. It's Bristol. Start your engine. The Food City Dirt Race. Bell works to the outside of Briscoe. Can he make it stick? We've got a battle shaping up for the lead. Martin Truex's advantage over Daniel Suarez has shrunk to just a car length and a half. Larson gets out of shape right in front of William Byron. Makes a little contact with Suarez. The Food City Dirt Race at Bristol. Coverage starts Sunday night at 5 on Milwaukee's home for NASCAR. The Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Welcome back to LTN on this Easter Sunday. NASCAR had a, uh, a meeting this week scheduled with uh, the car owners. And, uh, you know, I think that they probably told the car owners they, they don't like it when they go to the press regarding negotiations. Please don't do that. Uh, so NASCAR's car owners decided, I tell you what, we won't go to the media, but you have a meeting and then we're not going to show up. And so uh, NASCAR is all seated around the table, and none of the owners showed up. Um, there's there's uh, whispers, though. No one's talking officially. There's, there's whispers of what's going on. Um, first of all, um, apparently there is relative satisfaction with the new revenue-sharing revenue model. Uh, as we talked about in the past, certain percentages go to team owners and tracks and NASCAR, and um, the owners had asked for and apparently uh, got some kind of concessions from NASCAR and the amount, uh, the percentage of the TV money that's going to go to the car owners. 
okay, but that was only part of it. The other part is the charter system. And um, NASCAR is not budging. They do not want permanent charters. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, NASCAR is holding firm against these permanent charters. The system is, is due to, uh, to end after next year. Uh, Dan, how would, is this going to be uh, affected by this no permanent charter thing? Do they want to revisit and maybe uh, re-award charters or something on a different basis? I mean, it could be, because you think about what has happened since they first went into play. Look how many charters have been sold and traded and, and you know, the shell game that's been played to keep some of these teams around that uh, just to keep their chartering and get the, the better purse money deal. So I think they may want to look at how they are distributed and maybe, maybe, you know, have some more teams come in. What if somebody new wants to come into sport? How do you get one? Right now it's kind of hard. you got to buy one for like $20 million, you know. Yeah. That, that's all going to ha- go into play as far as – with the new TV contract, that's kind of about the saying it too. So I kind of see both sides. I mean, I, the teams that want to give up something good, and NASCAR kind of wants more control. I think it's interesting. I wonder if uh, anywhere in the negotiations, and Ed, I don't even know if that's a good idea. Do you think we need more than thirty-six charters, or is that a good number? Well, I think part of the problem is is that they don't like the idea that if you don't perform for three races, Dan's got a good mm-hmm. understands that quite well, but. If you don't perform well enough, you lose your charter, and I don't think they like that. Yeah. Right, Dan? There's a couple of things like that. Yeah, if you're in the bottom three in points for three years in a row, they can take it away from you because, you know, you're not competitive. And they've figured out a way, the team owners have figured out a way of getting around that by, like Dan said, you know, leasing it to another team or or changing car numbers so you're starting from zero again and, well, NASCAR doesn't like that sort of thing, and that's what the big holdup is right now. So, Also this week, um, the uh, All-Star Race Week at North Wilkesboro, uh, has, uh, they've put a schedule out, and the format is out for the, uh, for the All-Star Race, Brian. Um, uh, back to the old short track. Right. If you remember last year when we discussed the All-Star Race, we talked about how you needed to have you know, a, a bachelor's degree in math to figure it out. Well, that's not the case this year. It's very simple. It's a 200-lap race for the All-Star Race. All laps count until the very end, and there's going to be a break halfway through. Now, the interesting caveat is, and I saw a little presser about this yesterday, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was involved in this, and they talked about the tires available. Now, after that break you're only going to be allowed one more set of tires to change. So you're going to have to strategically figure out when you want to put that on. So it should make for interesting because, remember, the old surface is at North Wilkesboro yet. So the tire wear is going to be a big factor in it. Um, they also added – They also added fall off? what's that? I think a three-second fall-off in testing. Yes, yes. <laughs> and they also added on Saturday night's portion of it, they're going to have heat races for the all-star competitors. So you're going to have the truck race, and then you're going to have heat races. Uh, they're going to be 60 laps each and one – way you finish in one heat race will start the inside row. The other heat race will will do the outside row. Uh, the All-Star Open is going to be on Sunday. That's going to be 100 laps. They're going to have practice and qualifying for all those divisions on Friday night. And then they're going to have the old pit crew challenges back, too, where it's going to be, you know, every team will have their shot. You're going to go one at a time, and you're going to do the pit crew thing, just like the old days. So it's really cool. This format is what I grew up as a kid watching, and I think that's really neat that they're getting back to that. And hopefully this is something that sticks because – the old all-star races the last couple of years were so confusing. Nobody really gave a crap, but I think this is really going to be a, a big smashing success, I think. If actually, you... they changed that pit stop challenge deal. It's actually going to be how they perform in the race itself rather than going head-to-head like they did in the past. Oh, this just said here, like on Friday night, there's a pit crew challenge, so I'm not sure when that's going to be. If you'll remember back uh, to when they were shuffling around and trying to figure out how how to get a second date for Texas, um, the uh, Speedway Motorsports bought North Wilkesboro with the intent to just shut it down and take the dates. One of the dates, if I'm remembering right, uh, one of the dates went up to New Hampshire and the other one went to Texas. Dan, that sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah, that's where they went. One went to Texas, one went to New Hampshire, and now it's kind of ironic that North Wilkesboro is going to take something back from Texas. And Texas, 
really didn't have uh, a great event down there. It wasn't well attended, and uh, they're thinking of giving the whole event a uh, a booster shot by moving it back to a a short track. Ryan, yeah. are they, did they put in more uh, seats? Yes, they did. They have they have some seats now on the back stretch. I mean, it's still not going to be a hundred thousand seats or anything like that. But uh, they said there all the sponsors that were involved in this were given tickets. And uh, Marcus Smith on one of the interviews I saw yesterday said went to all the sponsors and whoever didn't have tickets left were supposed to give them back. So there still are going to be a few All Star Sunday tickets available if you go online. They're probably going to go fast, but there are going to be a few. And then I mean, there's racing starting on Tuesday. All the way through Sunday. So every day there's going to be something there. You got an ASA, a Stars Tour race, Cars Tour race, Pro Late Model race, the what truck race. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. It is unbelievable. And one other thing they talked about, and we've been talking about this before too, is the infrastructure there and the parking. And Marcus Smith emphasized to everybody that, you know, they looked, and on average, two people come in a vehicle to every race. And he goes, if we want this to be successful and we don't want to have delays, get together with your buddies and carpool there. Let's get at least four people in a vehicle so that we don't have any big issues there. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. He says they got plenty of parking available, but he says to try to make this go smooth, that would be the best way to do it. So I think they're trying to get all the bases covered here to make this a successful event. And, and Brian, that, that, that challenge on Friday, I think the qualifying is part of the pit stop, right? How your pit stop is, is it your qualifying time? I believe so. He said it was going to be one at a time. So, yeah, I think it's like the old school, yeah, you qualify, and then the pit stop part of it is going to be part of the pit stop challenge, I believe. I didn't see the entire interview, but they said the pit stop pit stop challenge is back. So and it's on Friday night's portion of the program. Yeah, but that's, that pit stop challenge is going to occur during a race. During qualifying. Qualifying. It's on yes. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, right. Interesting. Not going oh. head-to-head with each other, but – how you perform in that qualifying race. Fleet Farm is your lawn care headquarters for everything from lawnmowers, string trimmers, fertilizer, soil, and more. This week only, get four bags of Superior Cedar Chips and Mulch for just $12. And on Saturday, April 1st, the first 150 customers get a chance to crack open an egg and save up to 30% off their entire purchase. Plus, from 10 a.m. until noon, the first 75 kids can decorate a Fleet Farm Easter pail. Interesting. We're not sure how that all works out, but we're going to find out that's for sure. We're going to sneak away and do a break. Brian's got some results from Dirt, and we'll be back right after these. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low-mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude Rude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's Sales and Service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed. Spring is in the air and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone, topsoil and compost. For all your landscaping needs visit PMF Landscape Supply 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. 
Mm-hmm. This week on NASCAR Live, NASCAR Hall of Famer Daryl Waltrip joined the show. One thing I think it helped me a lot through the years was I was a little bit younger than a lot of the guys I was racing against, and so they would give out and I wouldn't, and so I would come on, you know, 150, 200 laps to go and, and uh, take control of the race and win it from there. So I just like that track. I like the challenge. I like everything about it, and that's why I, I did well there, I guess. There's much more waiting for you each week on NASCAR Live. Every Tuesday night at 6 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And now the LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. Yes, a lot of racing going on this weekend. Probably the busiest weekend we've had since Speed Weeks uh, back in February. We'll start Thursday night. Bulls Gap, Tennessee, the Volunteer Speedway. If you did not get a chance to see this race, please look it up and watch it. It was the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge for the Dirt Late Models on the high banked four-tenths mile, $20,000 to win. And Kyle Larson beat Jonathan Davenport and Dale McDowell in an absolutely incredible race. They exchanged side jobs left and right. And just after Kyle Larson had said Jonathan Davenport was so difficult to beat the week before, he went out and did it that night. And it was a incredible race, a huge crowd, and a smashing success to open up the weekend up at Bristol. Also Friday night, Farmer City, Illinois, opened up their season. The UMP late model feature winner was Jason Fagger, and in the Modifieds it was Michael Ledford. Marshalltown, Iowa, the IMCA Frostbuster. In the Modifieds it was Tim Ward, and the stock cars was Troy Jerovitz. He used to be a Wisconsin native. Now he lives in Iowa and sells shocks. Tipped in Iowa at the Cedar County Speedway, in the Modifieds, Jeff Larson. Brandon Schmidt from Beaver Dam finished third in that event. In the IMCA stock cars it was Dallin Murdy. Brett Wenzel from up in Two Rivers made the tow to Iowa, and he finished seventh in that feature. West Burlington, Iowa, the 34 for Raceway Friday night. The IRA Sprint Cars to open up their season in conjunction with the MOWA Sprint Car Series and Hunter Schoenberg picked up the win on a last corner, last lap pass. Uh, that was a pretty breathtaking feature too if you saw it. Pretty impressive race there. So Hunter was your winner Friday night. Osborne, Missouri, the US 36 Raceway for the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars. Hunt Sheldon Howdenchild was your winner. And Friday night, Lake City, Florida, the All-Tech Raceway, the Hunt the Front Super Late Model Series, $20,000 to win. Ricky Thornton Jr. came from 14th to win the feature there on the half mile. He is two for two at All-Tech Raceway. He's got to love that place. Last night, Boone, Iowa, another night of the IMCA Frostbusters, and the same winners again, Tim Ward in the Modifieds and Troy Jerovitz in the Stock Cars. Night number two at Cedar County Speedway in Tipton, Iowa, in the Modifieds, Dylan Thornton was your winner, and the Stock Cars was Dallin Murdy. Tyler Wilson from up in Green Bay, he finished third in the Stock Car feature there. Peoria, Illinois. The $5,098 to win race there for the UMP late models. Ryan Unsicker was your winner. Brownstown, Indiana, the Northern All-Star Late Model Series. 6000 to win. Bobby Pierce got the win there. Middletown, New York, the Orange County Fair Speedway for the Short Track Super Series Big Block Modifieds. twelve grand to win. Matt Shepard got the win. Night number two for the IRA Sprint Cars in West Burlington, Iowa. Chase Randall, the young kid from Texas, picked up the win. If you saw it there, scary incident for Bill Baylog. He went flipping down the front straightaway while battling for the lead. Got out of the car, was disgruntled, went off. This happened early in the race. And then when Victory Lane came along, Chase Randall crawls out of his car, and here comes Bill on his four-wheeler zipping up to try to meet with the kid. Fortunately, uh, cooler heads prevailed as the officials separated him, but Bill Billog was not happy with Chase Randall in that race. <laughs> they got together a little bit on the front straightaway. And finally, Park City, Kansas, the 81 raceway for the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series, the Jason Johnson Classic. Rico Abreu picked up the win in that one. And some sad news to finish the dirt results with. Uh, I did not have USAC results from Lawrenceburg, Indiana, because a, a very scary accident happened during qualifying there. A uh, kid by the last name Owen was qualifying. He was second quick in hot laps. Had a horrible incident. Bicycled the car in turn number two, went up and hit the wall hard. And unfortunately, he succumbed to his injuries. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen a sprint car racer die in a wreck, Dan. I would say probably that asphalt one Dave Steele years ago, right? Justin Owen, the kid's name. Justin was. Owen, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, it's been a while since we've had a wreck in a non-wing sprint car accident. So uh, uh, that was an unfortunate situation there. So thoughts and prayers out to that family and to everybody in the USAC nation who uh, follows the non-wing sprint car stuff. Brian, I watched the last uh, – I didn't see the side-by-side racing um, with uh, Jonathan Davenport and Larson. When I saw it, Larson was ahead, and I just – there was no passing for the lead. But Larson – I mean, I, I guess I don't know enough about dirt track racing, and I have to ask, why the hell did he just move off of that wall? Because he kept hitting it lap after lap after lap with the car. <laughs> That's the fastest way around the track. I mean, 
He went up there, and, and the time Davenport got by him, he went down low because a lap car was coming up on him. That thing went 50 laps, green to checker, without a caution. So there was a lot of lap cars there with 28 cars starting in that race. Um, so he, he had to move, maneuver around to get off there. But when he was up on the wall, that is the fastest part because the cushion was up there. He could hold that thing wide open. Um, Jonathan Davenport's car wasn't maneuverable enough to do that. He said he had to run more through the middle, and that's why Larson was able to beat him. All right. Well, uh, interesting. Uh, for Sure was fun. Racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines. Just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed with inflation compensation you can win a thousand dollars to stretch your wallet oh my God. just keep it here to win a thousand dollars when you enter the keyword at our website the big 920.com I guess we were off the air I had no idea we kept doing the program and I don't know how much of this was covered? So, uh, Brian, I think uh, we go back to square one here. Um, the uh, new mayor of Chicago was uh, took. He's going to be sworn in pretty soon. We thought Lori Lightfoot was bad, but at least she brought NASCAR in, to, 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 and she was a, a, a race lover. This new guy, Brandon Johnson, uh, is not a NASCAR fan. He says he's going to review all contracts. But um, there is a 180-day termination notice required, so he cannot cancel the race in Chicago this year. And, um, you know, I would say that uh, this is going to be um, looked at very, very closely. Absolutely. NASCAR is going to be under the microscope for sure uh, to see how this event pulls off. And there's still a lot of moving parts that haven't been settled yet, you know, Pit areas or garage areas where the teams are going to work on their cars, where the haulers are going to go. You know, we we had heard that maybe the Xfinity haulers were going to be out at, you know, Soldier Field and have to bring their stuff in, and they didn't like that. So that's still a moving part and process there. Where's how's everybody going to get in there? Where's the media center going to be? A lot of those moving pieces still haven't been settled yet. We just submitted for our our credentials the other day, so Dan and I plan on going down there for that event. Uh, fingers crossed, we'll see how it works, but. The ticket sales are up. Now, they're not a lot of tickets that were that were sold. There's not a ton of seats that are available. They're the reserve seats that they have are mostly gone. They're, av- they're, they're guessing about 50,000 or so people will be there for the two-day event. It's just Saturday and Sunday. So that's a decent crowd. But, again, it's half of what Road America had when they had their race there. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, uh, you don't ever want to see an event, you know, not do well for Julie's sake. We hope this event is successful. Then again, us up here in Wisconsin, we're selfish. We want the race back at Road America. So, right. you know, we'll see. Uh, is there room for both? I'd argue there is. If this is successful, I think you could have both. But, you know, we'll see how this goes and see how the event how the event takes off and, and how well the people embrace it down in Chicago. But the politicians are really going to be looking at it closely. Could be a one and done, but they are going to have one. So, um uh... 
plan on it this year. A couple other uh, notes for you. Tommy Baldwin, remember that name? He's uh, He was a prolific uh, crew chief and a, a car owner. He's back. He's joined Rick Ware Racing. He's going to be the competition director over there. And uh, that's pretty cool to have Tommy Baldwin back in the garage area every week. And if you didn't see it yet, check out the Drone Cone. Today, instead of putting a cone on the racetrack like they do at, at uh, most dirt tracks everywhere and on a rope so you can pull it back quickly, uh, they've got a drone with a, with a lit-up piece on it so the drivers can see it through the dust, apparently, and uh, they're going to be using it for tonight's race, which gets the green flag at 6.14 Milwaukee time. Last week, we didn't do a very good job of picking the winner. Kyle Larson was the, Larson was the winner at Richmond. I thought uh, Josh Berry was the most uh, impressive run of everybody by skipping a pit stop and, and making himself uh, uh, up front available for a win anyway, even though Larson had the car to beat. But none of us picked Kyle Larson, and uh, we're going to the dirt today. I can't say we're going to have a dirt guy win this thing. It's very possible that Joey Logano, who is not a dirt guy, could come back and win this, and that's who I'm picking today. Ed, who are you thinking? William Byron. Ah, okay. Dano? Well, Kyle Larson's too easy, so I'm going to go with Christopher Bell. (laughs) Never take anything the easy way. And uh, here's here's where Brian is going to take the eighth car watch. Brian? The A car, no. He used to drive the A car. I'm going to take Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick had this race right there last year, and it didn't work out. I'd say he's going to get his second win of the year today. Interesting. Uh, kind of all over the board. Um, but we got a, two Toyotas and two sh- uh, and a Chevy and a Ford. So yeah, we're we're pretty much got it all covered. Well, we're sorry about that. The computer crashed, and that's what happened before as we were doing the program. So our apologies, and uh, glad you stuck with us. Hope everybody has a wonderful Easter and uh, get ready for the racing season. Next Sunday at the Dells in two weeks, Flinger Speedway gets going. So for all of us involved with the program, we want everybody to remember that real race cars have doors. Even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's Talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta, our in-house engineer and uh, website coordinator is Matt Losey. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, Happy Easter, and we'll see you next week, everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltmradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash ltmradionetwork. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.